What's happening, folks? Gerald here, aka J490, coming at you with another reaction, a different kind of reaction. See, this one, this is a uh, like list compelled by this channel I really like on YouTube called Do You Remember? Great for flashbacks. Like, I, I kind of mentioned my story with things and how I am so keen to old school stuff um, that I grew up without cable and my mom's music was mostly what I listened to. So I grew up with a huge respect and love of things from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, um, and felt like it was all new. <laughs> Except unless it was in black and white. If it was in black and white, I knew it was old. But <laughs> um, I grew up not really knowing the difference, I, except that I knew that we didn't have cable and whatnot. But, <laughs> but when it came to music especially, I couldn't really differentiate until maybe my teenage years, um, unless I was seeing a visual. And without cable, you ver you rarely saw a visual. So this is a list that the channel Do You Remember compelled of top 10 songs of the 1960s you forgot were cool. So I don't, I, I anticipate, I anticipate that I will know most of these songs. Oh, that you forgot were awesome. Um, I anticipate that I knew most of these songs, or I know most of these songs. There are at least a good handful. I don't know. That's the fun of this, and that's why I had this idea. It's like, let's try to do a reaction. Let's play this together. And so, it's not only me. I want to know your average, too, at the end of this. So, let's see. Ten songs of the 1960s you forgot were awesome. Before we get to it, go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And now, without further ado, this is Top Ten Songs. This is top 10 songs of the 60s you forgot were awesome. These boots are made for walking, Nancy Sinatra. <laughs> Done it. These boots are gonna walk all over you. In 1965, Frank Sinatra's eldest daughter, Nancy Sinatra, walked into and all over our hearts when she released this hit with a walking bass line that she strutted all over. The single is an excellent example of mid-60s grooviness, helped along by copious use of an instrument sadly lacking in modern music, the tambourine. These Boots was written by Sinatra's longtime musical partner, Lee Hazelwood, who also intended to sing the song himself, mm. until Sinatra correctly pointed out that the song would be, quote, harsh and abusive coming from a guy. One True. of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Seems a lot more ominous and threatening if a man is singing it. Although there have been numerous covers of the song by such varied artists as Billy Ray Cyrus and mm. Megadeth, Nancy's original recording remains both the definitive and best version out there. While not played much on the radio, the song can still be found stomping away in such movies as Full Metal Jacket and Austin Powers. Happy together, the turtles. The Beatles. I do know it. The monkeys. The turtles. You can be forgiven for forgetting that the last of these animalistic bands existed, as history has largely left them behind. And yet, put on their 1967 number one hit, Happy Together, and you'll find yourself saying, Oh yeah, I love this song. Why don't I, I hear it more? Yep. The Turtles were struggling for traction in the competitive 60s Los Angeles music scene when they were approached by their label about recording a new single that 12 other groups had already passed on, Happy mm. Together, which in hindsight seems almost criminal. The Turtles blended folk and psychedelia perfectly on this hit, resulting in mid-60s pop perfection that deserves to stand alongside the best recordings of the decade. Sadly, the magic was not to last, as the band were at loggerheads over the direction of the group, and they broke up just three years later. I guess they weren't Always all that case. happy together after yeah. all. Crimson and Clover, Tommy James and the Shondells. Wow. Do you ever wake up in yeah, the morning with one. one image or word lingering inexplicably from your dream? I have, but I never turned these random relics of my subconscious into a number one hit. One morning, singer Tommy James of Tommy James and the Shondells woke up with two words in his head, Crimson and Clover. He had no idea what they meant, but thought they would make a great song title. The song was a departure from the band's bubblegum pop past. It was tinged with psychedelia and featured a distinctive tremolo effect in which both the song's guitar and vocals would vibrate in time to the single's tempo. After an appearance
appearance by the band on The Ed Sullivan Show, Crimson and Clover shot to number one and spent more than 16 weeks on the charts, as it was number one during Christmas time. At the end of the song, when the vocals are heavily processed, some listeners thought James was singing Christmas is over instead of Crimson and Clover. The song has been covered by Might such luminaries as Prince and Joan Jett. But it still doesn't get the recognition today that it deserves as a late 60s psychedelic triumph. House of the Rising Sun, The Animals. I know that. I've done that. While House of the Rising Sun might not be as forgotten as some other of the hits on this list, the story behind the song certainly is, because no one actually knows who wrote it. The earliest published lyrics date to 1925, but the song's origin probably spans back decades, if not centuries before that. Famous folk singers Woody Guthrie and Bob Dylan both tried their hands at it, but it wasn't until the Animals released their version in 1964 that the song truly became a masterpiece. Piece. House of the Rising Sun, at 4 minutes 30 seconds, with howling vocals and a pulsating organ, was hardly a typical 60s pop song. The Animals actually sang it at the end of their concerts to set them apart from other bands, but the crowds loved it, and after recording the single in only one take, the band had a hit on their hands. The song was one of the first to successfully blend rock and folk. Apparently when Bob Dylan first heard the Animals single, he leapt out of his car, pounded his trunk in excitement and decided at that moment to go electric. You'll never walk alone. Jerry and the Pacemakers. I don't know it, by Brian but Epstein, I want to. Recorded by George Martin from Liverpool. Ah, this next song must be sung by the Beatles. Wait, it's not? It's understandable if you never heard of the Beatles' little sister of a band, Jerry and the Pacemakers, because history has not remembered them as well as some of their contemporaries. But you've definitely heard their 1963 hit, You'll Never Walk Alone. Originally written for the Broadway musical Carousel, the song is an uplifting exhortation to keep on trucking even when the world looks bleak. As long as you have hope in your heart, you'll never truly be alone. Alone. Although the song has largely been forgotten on this side of the pond, people in the UK will be very familiar with it, as the single is the unofficial anthem for Liverpool FC. The song is loudly sung by supporters before every home match. A tradition that took on a deeper emotional meaning after the Hillsborough disaster of 1989, in which 96 fans were crushed to death. Oh, wow. Aquarius, let the sunshine in the fifth dimension. This is the dawning of the age. I know. <laughs> One of my Much favorite like songs a in the world. Flapping its wings. Sometimes the smallest events have a big effect. One day, singer Billy Davis Jr. lost his wallet on a train, where it was found by a member of the crew of the Broadway hit Hair. So Davis went to see the show, fell in love with the song Aquarius, and insisted that his band, The Fifth Dimension, record it. When the other members of the band pointed out that it was barely half a finished song, he replied that they would combine it with another of the musical's numbers, which, although different in key and tempo, Davis resolved to quote, jam together like two trains. And thus Genius. was born the perfect song for the late 60s. Just Genius. like the hippie movement gaining steam around the country, Aquarius dreamed of a near future where peace and love reign, where free minds guide the future of humanity. And also just like the hippie movement, the song remains a relic of the past. Although it's awesomely silly and fun, the single rarely gets played today. So come on, let the sunshine in. 96 Tears, Question Mark, and the Mysterians. It seems bizarre know this, that history like hasn't it. been more kind to a song with as catchy an organ rip as 96 Tears, but so goes the fickle tides of taste. When the band released their 1966 hit, it quickly soared to the top of the charts, perhaps lessening the amount of tears the band was crying. Not only was the song a smash hit in its own time, but the single foresaw the future of rock music. 96 Tears, with its simple instrumentation and relentless pace, was one of the 
first successes for the burgeoning genre of garage rock and has been credited with being one of the songs that influenced the beginning of punk rock. Mm. It's been theorized that 96 was a censored version of the original 69, but lead singer Question Mark has denied this, instead stating that the number has a deep spiritual meaning for him. Bobby Balderrama, the lead guitarist, was only 14 when they recorded this incredible wow. song because as Q puts it, there's no age to rock and roll. And when asked, where did you get your name question mark? He coolly responded, Coming from a man who has stated that his soul is from Mars and he once walked the earth with dinosaurs, that sounds about right. Man, the 60s were the best time for tunes. Even the somewhat forgotten hits were outstanding. So tell us, what dusty gem had you forgotten about? Is there another great 1960s song that should be included on this list? So, of that list of those songs there were only three i didn't know a few i need to revisit a few i didn't know the artists but there were three songs i had never heard before and i plan on i would like to one reason i'm incorporating this too is i like these kind i've always loved lists <laughs> like i say if i got if i was a bit faster with my editing and a bit cleaner with the editing then i would have a bunch of lists on here I want to do, there's a lot of songs that he mentioned that I want to do that I haven't done yet. It was happy, I was happy to see that there were plenty that um, I already did. There were oh, a few, I think, uh, yeah, it's like two or three. But um, there were three songs I did not know. I want to know from you guys in the comments if there's any that you didn't know or forgot about or, and, <laughs> either or, would like me to react to. Like I said, I'm going to make my own picks from this but i want to know from you guys in the comments if there's any that you'd react to that you would like me to react to and any that you think should have been added to the list because the question what should have been added to the list oh i got many i got a many there's many of motown artists that i can think of many stacks records artists i could think of that i would have really you know but but that's just off of what i know but i'm saying i don't think that a lot of other people know the same way because <laughs> that's always been me in music and older music and older tv is that i very much understand that i'm an anomaly that not everyone keeps up the way i keep up so anyway so i, I i'm a big help to these kind of lists i think and uh but then at the same time i'm not immune to learning from these lists and because i'm i'm great i'm grateful that there were songs on there i didn't know because now i get to learn them you know and that's why i appreciate and want from your comments and the conversations with you guys i love learning and then teaching what i learn or helping others learn what i learned is fun anyway Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and like and subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. If you'd like to follow me on social media, that's in the description below. If you'd like to tip me, sponsor a request, just plain donate, that's also in the description below. If you would like to um, join my Patreon, become a patron on the Patreon, that's in the description too. And on Patreon, you're going to get benefits like early access to videos like these. This one will be an early video. Shout out to Patreon. And Patreon-only videos. If this video gets blocked on YouTube, this will be a Patreon-only video. Shout out to Patreon. And <laughs> just in conclusion, thank you guys so much for even taking the time to push play on this video here today. It all means a lot, and it all goes a long way. And beyond everything else, please take care of yourselves and each other. I can do